Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Ed Block Courage Cast. We are back and <clears throat> better than ever. We still don't know where Wally is. He wasn't here with us last week. We're, we're kind of playing the guessing game a little bit on where Wally is. He's the where Waldo. Um, maybe he'll hop on. Maybe he won't. I don't know. We'll find out. I'm your host, Dave Stonewell, though. Don't fear. We still got a great show. We still got our two great co-hosts, starting with former athletic trainer with the Baltimore Ravens and the New Orleans Saints. That would be Mr. Dwayne Brooks. And uh, DB, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm excited about the cast this weekend, so let's see what happens tonight. <clears throat> yeah, we got a we got fun pot. We got great guests yeah. that we'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, my guy, former NFL defensive lineman with the Minnesota Vikings, Cincinnati Bengals, and the Kansas City Chiefs. That would be our good friend. Mr. Dwayne Clemens. Dwayne, it is great to hear and see you, buddy. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for the great intro, Dave. Always good to see my boy, D. Brooks. And hopefully I get to talk to my boy, Wiley, tonight. Right, right. Same here. Do we have, do we have, to, uh, do we have to have questions? Like, do we have to <laughs> ask the question about, is he ducking? Is Wally ducking us? I mean, these are all... I think very fair comments that we have to make here about his, like that, huh? about his absence. I mean, he is, he's, he's not here. We have to ask questions. We're going to ask these questions until Wally is here and can answer <laughs> these questions for us. He owes, a, he owes us some flowers. He does. <laughs> I, nothing. Right. He owes us an apology. He owes us an uh, apology. Or I think we have to make him do something in New Orleans. Ooh, that sounds really fun. That's I, I know Dwayne Brooks got some great ideas for that. Of course, of course. That feels very dangerous. I don't know the can of worms we just I just opened up with that. <laughs> I seen an episode of Jackass where he took a baby alligator and, and put it against his nipple. I think that sounds a par for the course. And another New Orleans theme. <laughs> I'm sure we can pull that off. I'm certain we can pull that off. <laughs> He can take it. He's a big dude. Why not? Two and a half minutes into the pod is not how I expected. That is what I expected to be probably the first topic of conversation is putting an alligator against Wally's nipple. That's not at all how I expected that conversation. to go. So we're going to pivot here. Uh, we do have some news. If you're in the Baltimore area for the Ed Block Foundation, this is a really cool thing. Join us for a night of fun, December 9th, with Ravens superstar wide receiver Zay Flowers. A tailgate buffet podcast Q&A meet and greet December 9th from 7 to 9 p.m. Evolved Hospitality Catering Hall in Bel Air Road. Tickets are $100. There's sponsorship available. Uh, Contact Brett, and there will be a toy drive as well going on. A great event during the holiday season to get together and meet one of the bright stars on the Baltimore Ravens and Zay flowers. Who's becoming a friend of the foundation. Um, Great event. You can go to edblock.org. There's a link to um, get tickets. You can also go to, and we'll have this link tagged just so everybody knows in the description of the episode, but you can go to one dot bidpal.net backslash holiday 24 to purchase tickets and the toy drive by the way will go to the kids at st vincent villa the baltimore ravens courage house and awesome this is going to be this is going to yeah. be a great night really looking forward to that a meet and greet photo op with a flowers there'll be a tailgate buffet from the great people at um if evolved hospitality group they run um the local which supplies our food for the players when they come in on Sundays to the Courage House, and then a live podcast show with a Q&A. So a really cool time and really nice event um, for everybody involved. So you can go to edblock.org to get more information. You can check out our social media pages, and we will have a link to buy tickets as well on there. So a really cool event that we have coming up here in a little less than a month. So if you want to support the foundation and support a good cause, 
during the holiday season when kids around the country, the abused and neglected kids that we help all around the country are going to need your support. So you can go to edblock.org and you can find all the information on all 27 of our Courage Houses and help make the holidays a little bit better for um, our kids and our Courage House network this year. Dave, I got to step off really quick. All right, so we just lost DB, so we're down to two now. It's me and DC. I'll, I'll be back. Oh, he'll I want be back. to thank everybody that contributes to that foundational, and hopefully we raise a lot of money for those kids. It's a wonderful cause. It is, and DC, not even not even as a former recipient, but that's what's great is that you are here, and you are such a big ambassador now for what we want to do and where we want to take this. So your support um greatly appreciated buddy well, thank you well these kids are near and dear to my heart i have many family members that were in the same similar situations and you know and I, I know it's the toughest thing you can do is to, to not have your parents in your life taking care of you but we're going to take care of them any way we can yeah and Speaking of, we have a great podcast, as we mentioned earlier. We're going to talk about some NFL, some big games in the NFL this weekend. We'll dive into those matchups here uh, in a moment. And Miami Dolphins 2023 Ed Block Courage Award recipient with the Cleveland Browns, now current Miami Dolphin, had a big play in Monday night's upset win in Los Angeles. Anthony Walker is going to join us a little bit later to talk about that, talk about being on a team with so many Ed Block Courage Award recipients on there, and more about his career. One of the more fascinating guys and fun conversations that we get to have here on this podcast. So really looking forward to catching up with him. But DC, this is a big weekend of some NFL games here coming up. Ooh, I'm not gonna bring up my team, but I'm looking forward to that Pittsburgh Ravens matchup because I feel like. There's two things that's going to happen this week. It's like, you know, the 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 cream is about to really rise to the top because right now there's about to be a huge separation, especially in the AFC. So we'll, we'll, we'll be ready to see this weekend who's, who's actually in control of their destiny. Well, I was going to say, and I, we'll start with the Ravens-Steelers game, and I'll ask you this question. Who is this more of a perfect game for? I think it's for the Ravens. I mean, to me, they have all the pressure in the world. I mean, nobody expected Pittsburgh to be here. And I think everybody realizes, man, that defense is is stifling. And when Russ is cooking, they can be a special team. And so I think the Ravens have got to be a little puckered knowing that they're already behind Pittsburgh and that Pittsburgh's playing great. And now this big game – all the pressures on them because, you know, Pittsburgh will still be in first place even if they lose this game, whereas if Baltimore loses this game, ooh, I mean, that 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 puts a, a, a definitive gap between them going into the AFC the North race uh, to the playoffs. And, and you know what? That's a great point. And the other point to add on to that is that Pittsburgh has been the Ravens' kryptonite the last couple of years. They've won seven of the late last eight matchups. Lamar Jackson plays his worst against Pittsburgh. Mm. So if you sit there and you look at that alone, you say, yeah, there's a lot to prove here for the Ravens. I, I, I'm going to say a little bit for Pittsburgh in the sense that Pittsburgh's got to prove they can hang with the top dogs in the AFC. And we know who the top dogs are. It's Kansas City, it's Buffalo, and it's Baltimore. Yes. If, if Pittsburgh can win this game, now to me they've legitimately leg- – Everything's legitimized for them. Absolutely. And now you look at them and you say, okay, now how do you stack up against Buffalo and how do you stack up against Kansas City? Because that's the, the that's the next progression in this. If you're the Steelers, is you're going from, all right, you play the Ravens, you beat the Ravens. Now we know you're a top dog. How do you stack up with Kansas City and with Buffalo? And they will get a chance to play the Chiefs later in the year on Christmas Day. Yes. I've always been scared of Pittsburgh. Mike Tomlin, he's a scary dude, man. He somehow always finds a way to put a winning team together. Even when the coverage seemed like they're bare, he, you know, he turns a, a few few pebbles and crumbs in, into some kind of souffle and, and, and comes out with a dish. 
And, you know, this whole thing about Russ cooking is it's starting to catch on. And if those teams, his teammates really start believing in them, getting behind them, I mean, and they get this offense really roaring to life with that defense, man, they, they, they could be a real problem for anybody, especially, um, you know, my favorite Chiefs. Well, let's talk about your Chiefs a little bit. So I'll ask this question before we get out of here, sort of previewing this game. Who's your pick to win Sunday? Well, you know, I got to ride with my dogs. Although we know in the regular season, Buffalo tends to have a little bit of an edge. They tend to finally get us, but I think they're a little beat up. I think we're playing such an unorthodox style of football. I don't think they've ever played a Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid offense that's been this kind of, you know, deke and dunk and just kind of take everything that you give me and just make it just hard for the defense to 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 stop first downs from happening and then eventually get into the end zone. Whereas I think Buffalo seems like they're trying to find themselves. They got a lot of injuries. I feel like they might have, you know, a few more obstacles than we do, even though we're banged up too. But I, I think they're they might be even a little more banged up than we are. I look at this game and I think to myself, this sort of feels like the best the best chance Kansas City's gonna lose right here this yeah. week. Because I think if you're the Bills, sort of like we were just talking about with the Ravens and the Steelers, that this is the prove it game. I think this is the prove it game for Buffalo. Yes. Buffalo's got to show because they got blitzed by the Ravens earlier. They have to show that they are in that top echelon this year. And this at home, 425. The only thing that gives me any hesitation about picking Buffalo here is because Buffalo is such a second half team. They don't play well in the first half. They kind of play, I don't want to say the word lethargic, but they're sort of out of sorts um, defensively a little bit. I mean, offensively, Josh Allen makes his turnovers. And Kansas City's offense isn't great. If you can get Kansas City right now behind early in a game with all the injuries they have on the offensive line, with the injuries at the receiver position, I don't know if they have enough firepower to match Buffalo if this turns into Josh Allen ripping going up and down the field. I don't know if that right now Kansas City's at a spot where they can go toe-to-toe in a game like that with Josh Allen. But if Buffalo has one of those slow starts, Kansas City is going to win this game. Because Kansas City is, hey, can we get to can we get to the fourth quarter and be in a one-score game? And we'll find a way to win the game. I think the biggest advantage Kansas City has, everybody knows that Kansas City is just practicing for the postseason. Like, you know, it's almost uh, hilarious as a, as a Kansas City Chiefs fan, the last – you know, six or seven years, it's like the regular season really doesn't mean that much to us. And as big as this game is in terms of, hey, we can maybe possibly lock up home field advantage, possibly, you know, lock up the AFC first, you know, first place uh, seed. That's important. But I feel like we feel confident that by the time the playoffs start, we're going to be such a better team than we are now because everybody knows we don't play well the first half of the season. We've already had – we've played as bad as we can play and still been able to go undefeated. So I kind of feel like we go into this week, we put a couple of things together. Whether we take a step back or take a step forward, all of the pressure is on Buffalo. We're just practicing. And we pretty much know we're going to win our division. We pretty much know we're going to be there. Buffalo has to figure it out, even though they got a good shot since they pretty much have, have taken a commanding lead in their division as well. But I think they know that at the end of the day, this game is going to mean more to them than us. But we're going to be looking forward to basically taking this game, dissecting it, and getting ready for the playoff picture because that's what we're doing. Andy Reid and Mahomes are just basically practicing for the playoffs. I like that attitude. By the way, real fast, before we move on to the two other games I want to talk to, talk about who do you have winning Ravens-Steelers? I want the Steelers to win, so 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 I'm 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 gonna believe in Russ can cook. I'm 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 gonna get on the bandwagon, let Russ cook, 
Uh, and I feel like he can get it done because, uh, you know, they've been the Achilles heels to the Ravens. And I think that defense is, is going to be one of the few defenses that has the ability to to run around and, and match up with the athleticism that Lamar brings to the game. Well, you got to be a homer with Kansas City. I think it's a homer for the Ravens. I think they win. But here's here's the the reason that I think the Ravens win that game. It is hard to defend this Raven offense when it's the first time you're seeing it. Because you're trying to figure out what you're willing to take away from the Ravens. Are you willing to take away Derrick Henry? Well, you do that, Lamar Jackson right now with the weapons he has can pick you apart. If you decide to sit back, play the pass, try to neutralize the Lamar Jackson run game, now you got Derrick Henry that can beat you. I think for Pittsburgh, this is a tough matchup the first time you're seeing this offense. Because if you look at it, the only team that's played the Ravens twice so far is Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And in that first game, Cincinnati got carved by Lamar Jackson all game, up and down the field. That Thursday night game, that Raven offense sputtered a little bit. Cincinnati was able to make some stops. They were able to limit the big plays. I think that's where Pittsburgh right now, that's their disadvantage is you're facing this offense for the first time when it's humming. Dave, Dave, how much of a liability is Baltimore's defense right now? I mean, they're giving up the GOAT in the fourth quarter. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. I I mean, if the Ravens win this game, it's because Lamar Jackson does an MVP-like game. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's how they get it done is he just plays again at that MVP level, Derrick Henry probably breaks off a couple big runs in the second half. Now, do you think Lamar can keep winning if that defense doesn't find a way to become formidable? I mean, giving up 11 points, I think, that is what they're doing in the fourth quarter. Yeah, How do you do that going into the playoff run? Well, I think, I think eventually they're going to get the defense fixed. It's not a talent thing with the defense. It's just – lack of communication and breakdowns at just bad moments. The more concerning part to me is the middle of the field's been a problem all year. That that's either zone that's either zone responsibilities or that's you're just that bad in coverage over the middle. I don't know what the answer to that question is, but I have to feel like they will eventually start to get it fixed a little bit. I think The thing with Lamar is if they continue to not have to run him, then yes, he can continue to carry them. If he starts Mm -hmm. to take a lot of beatings in games, then I think you're in trouble because then he's going to really become limited. In Pittsburgh with those athletic ends, uh, TJ Watt and uh, I always forget my other guy, the other linebacker. um, High Smith. High Smith. I feel like they're the kind of guys that can get some hits on them. Yeah, and that's that's a little bit of the the concern for that matchup. I want to get to the Thursday night game on Amazon Prime, the Commanders and the Eagles. Washington had a tough game at home Sunday against the Steelers, heartbreaking loss. Now I got to turn around on a short week and play an Eagle team that it feels like DC is kind of putting some things together here. Yeah, I'm a little scary. That 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 Eagles team is very talented, and it sounds like they've kind of figured out the locker room issues, and and kind of like have now they're all all kind of rowing in the same direction, which that team is is definitely a contender for the the Super Bowl, and you know I think Jalen is he, is he is he a hundred percent or what do you think is he fifty sixty seventy percent I know he was a little banged up. That's I've heard. I sounds like he'll be he'll be fine to play tomorrow night. My, my, I look at this and I say, I, Philadelphia, this is a kind of de facto playoff game for both these teams because these are the two teams that this division is going to come down to. I Absolutely. think we've talked a little bit about who needs the game more in some other matchups. Washington really needs this game because yes. if you look at Washington, their three losses, two of the three have come to Baltimore and Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm two of the top teams in the AFC and you go to the other, their other loss. I'm trying to pull it up here as we're talking like Washington needs to sort of prove that, Hey, they're not just the beneficiary of playing a soft schedule, right? Because they're playing a third place schedule for the lack of a better term. And that 
that means you're playing you're not playing top teams. Yes. So if you if you look at the commanders, their three losses have come to the Ravens, the Buccaneers, and the Steelers. Now they played Tampa Bay week one in Tampa. Then they played the Ravens and they played the Steelers. If Brian Robinson is healthy, I will tell you Washington will win this football game. Because that offense is different when he's out there. And scary Terry, boy. Woo. You want to talk that about a guy good. that doesn't get that the credit good. he deserves? Woo. That boy good. He's one of the best. Mm. So I just don't you? understand why he's not getting more publicity. But that's probably a good thing for them that he's still kind of being under the radar and everybody's looking at other guys, maybe not giving him the, the I guess, the – Respect that he deserves. Yeah. All right. Who do you like in this one? Because we have one more game to get to before we take a break. Well, I, I feel like the Eagles definitely have the advantage going into this one. But I'm I'm rooting for the commanders, mainly because their quarterback, he's a West Side product. I know he's from the IE, from my hometown, the, the Inland Empire. So, so I'm going to be uh, a commanders down this weekend. All right, well, I don't like this because I am picking the Commanders, too. Because I, I, I think if you're Philadelphia, this loss doesn't kill you. I think if you're the Commanders, this could be a big loss. If they lose this one and that's now two in a row they've lost against two good teams, and D.C., you can probably talk to this a little bit more than maybe I can, but there then that gets that psyche a little bit of maybe we're not there. The slide. Ooh, there's nothing worse than the slide going into November because the fans always remember what you do in November. Yeah. And you got to, like, I look at the commanders and I say, as great as they're playing, they're teetering on, if they get on a losing skid, I don't know if they get themselves out of it. That's going to be tough. He's a young quarterback. He hasn't been through this before, and he's been through a lot of winning most of his career. So this is going to be a real test for him to be able to go into this November run and see how hard it is to, you know, obviously the first half of the season is is, is already hard to get a win. But the second half of the season, I mean, it becomes a gauntlet of just butcher knives trying to get through there, healthy, winning, and in a, in a good position in the playoffs. All right, well, we are going to hit pause on that conversation because we have a great guest joining us here in a moment, so we're going to step aside for one split second. All right, well, we'll table our discussion about some of the big games in the NFL for a little bit later, but we are joined right now by 2023 Ed Block Courage Award recipient with the Cleveland Browns. He's now a current member of the Miami Dolphins. And he had a big week last week. He had a big week last week. So really excited to get a chance to talk to him. That would be Miami Dolphins linebacker. Anthony Walker Jr. is here with us. Anthony, welcome back to the pod. It's great to see you, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. I appreciate you guys having me. Um, You know, I think it was a big week for our team, honestly, uh, more than just me. But, uh, you know, happy to be, you know, home in Miami, you know, playing for the hometown team and, um, you know, getting getting the season, uh, you know, back on the right track. I, let me add, let, let's start there. How big was that win for the locker room after what's been a, a rough stretch for the Dolphins? Yeah. Um, anytime you can win in the NFL, man, it's a blessing. You know, it's hard. It's hard to win in the NFL. You know, we're the last two games before, you know, come down to last second field goals, you know, and just a game of inches. You know, people say that all the time and it sounds cliche, but it really is just a game of inches. So um, anytime you are able to find a way to win in the NFL, uh, especially against a team like the Rams uh, coming off a three game win streak, uh, playing really good football um, to get that win, I thought was huge for our locker room. Anthony, congratulations on your big play last week. Um, take us through what you were seeing and, and, and obviously the tip pass from your teammate. How did that all break down and, and, and what did you guys do as far as in practice to prepare for a moment like that to, to come together? Yeah, it's funny how you say that. Um, I was just telling my dad um, that was the exact same rep that I got and walked through last week. Um, literally, the, the exact same play, the exact same uh, – Hard that the coach drew up for us, same coverage, um, and happened to be in the same spot <laughs> that I was in in practice. Um, just the ball got tipped, but, um, you know, just executed coverage. You know, great call, obviously, from D.C., Anthony Weaver, and then executed the coverage 
um, with safety Javon Holland, um, you know, came right to my spot and the ball, you know, hit me right in the hand. So all I had to do was catch it. But, you know, obviously the big guys tipping the ball up front. Um, we're, we're never mad at that. Anytime we're able to get um, tips and overthrows, um, we, we, you know, we always say we got to get those. So, um, again, just a huge play for our team, but just great execution all around. So, so would you say you're manifesting these defensive <laughs> plays if you guys are already having premonitions? Yeah, um, that's what you got to do in this game. You got to visualize it. You got to visualize success, visualize, uh, you know, making big plays in this game. Um, you know, and again, it's just like, again, it's just repetition, right? Just doing the doing the small things, the small details and executing when the game, when the lights come on. Sweet. Uh, former athletic trainer here. I just wanted to ask you some questions about your injury background and uh, ask you some questions about your relationship with the Dolphin staff there. Yeah. Um, funny part uh, about my injury uh, history was I never missed a game until I got to the NFL and I got hurt my first game in the NFL and uh, had oh, a wow. hamstring. Hamstring. Um, actually, it was the Rams' first game back in L.A. I was playing for the Colts at the time and our first game, first regular season game was uh, – in L.A., um, running down on kickoff, pulled my hamstring. So out four games, come back, pull my hamstring again, out another four games. Uh, so, yeah, my rookie year basically was, you know, injury field, and uh, you kind of use that year as a red shirt year and just kind of mentally become a pro, um, learning the, the small details and taking care of your body. Um, I have a, I had a great relationship, still have a great relationship with the Indianapolis coach uh, training staff. I'm sorry. Hold on one second, guys. This, <laughs> they, I'm not supposed to be in here right now. <laughs> uh, they don't we're, want you out the building. <laughs> yeah, they're kicking me out, but no, we're all good. Um, but yeah, like I said, I had a I have a great relationship um with the uh, um with every training staff that I've been a part of, um, the Colts, um, the Browns, and even here um with Kyle um and the guys um, you know, really helping me um, you know, get my body right every day, every week. Um, you know. Obviously, I'm year eight now. What some would say, kind of old in the NFL, but uh, just the, the importance of just taking care of your body daily. Um, I learned that at a, you know, obviously had to learn that really young in the NFL, um, and it's just part, been part of my re regime now since, uh, you know, since I've been here. You are a part of a Miami Dolphin team that I'll be totally honest is is very much fans uh from us from the foundation we're very much a fan of you guys anthony because you have so many former recipients mm -hmm. a part of that organization yourself shaquille barrett um alec ingle teron armstead jordan poyer all former recipients your defensive coordinator that you mentioned anthony weaver jordan brooks is also a former recipient like Take me inside. What is that locker room like with all you guys? <laughs> this is live Gosh. podcasting at its best right <laughs> now. Sorry, just so God. everybody knows, this is <laughs> this is hilarious. Um, what is it like with all those guys in that locker room? Yeah, um, like you said, uh, again, just great guys, right? Great guys to be around, to learn from. Um, you got like you talked about some older, some younger, um, some like right in between that sweet spot, six, seven years in. Four years, 12 years in, Coach Weave, you know, been doing this for, been around the game for a very long time. So a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge to be around those guys. But, you know, the the mindset that those guys have every day um, is what makes this place so fun to come into work every day. Um, you know, we challenge each other on and off the field. Um, and again, just, you know, when you have guys like that, that push you to be better, um, that, that creates a great culture in the locker room. So, Anthony, I heard you kind of found out what it's like to be a GM and work on trades and, 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 and you know, kind of negotiate deals. I heard you got a nice Rolex for trading your number <laughs> back in the day from Deshaun Watson. <laughs> Take us through that whole trade process and, and how did you guys negotiate? And, and, and like, I'm a connoisseur of Rolex, so I've had a Tridor, I've had a Platinum Masterpiece, and a Presidential. <laughs> so I want to know about the pieces that you got from him. The crazy part about that story, um, you, like, probably think I'm kidding or lying or anything, but um, I didn't even ask Deshaun for anything. Um, honestly... He signed. I mean, well, he, you know, said he was coming to the Browns, and I'm like, okay, I wear number four. He wears number four. 
he's the franchise quarterback. I'm, you know, just you know, I'm a linebacker, <laughs> right? Like we don't, you know, we 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 you know we don't we don't get that, right? So I'm like, man, here, like, no here, man, you got it. I don't even want to argue with you. I don't want. I, I want you to feel welcome, man. You you know, obviously, you know, you've had a great career. You know, here here goes your number. Um, yeah, I didn't even ask for anything and. One day I'm doing an interview, and the next second uh, he's walking up <laughs> with the Rolex. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh man, appreciate it." You know, nice. that didn't ask for anything, man. Um, again, like I said, man, franchise quarterback. I'm never going to argue with that, and you know, anything to you know, again, that's our that's your starting quarterback. You want him to feel welcome and at home. So, um, yeah, I was willing to do that. Awesome, man. Hey, what kind of what kind of Rolex did he get you? you mind if we ask? Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, I, I gotta keep it under wraps. I gotta keep it under wraps. Still in the box too, so you know we we, we still taking you. care of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, I want to ask Anthony the um about coming back to Miami. This this is where you grew up. How special is it to get to play for your hometown team? Yeah, um, it's amazing, honestly. Um, more so for the fam, my family, you know, my friends that didn't get to travel much, you know, to see me play in college and, you know, since I've been in the NFL, um, grandmothers, granddads that, you know, just haven't been able to make that trip. Um, that they're able, I'm a little closer now that they're that so they're able to make it. Um and uh honestly, like I said, man, I, I it's the crazy part of you didn't like I, I didn't even grow up a Dolphin fan. I was always a Cowboy fan. You know, my dad was that hard Cowboy, so um, you know, we never, I never thought about, you know, being, you know, a part of the Dolphins. Um, and then when I got that call, I was like, wow, man, like, you know, things just always come full circle. Um, and I'm, I'm the biggest fan of the Dolphins now. So <laughs> <laughs> it's nice when they put a few dough knobs on your house, huh? Oh, uh, no doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how did you get out of the state of Florida for college to go play football? How did you, how did you <laughs> escape the state of Florida? Yeah, How did that everybody happen? always ask that question. Um, mm -hmm. Grew up uh, diehard Miami Hurricane, right? Uh, never wanted to leave. You know, all my boys played there. You know, all the people that I looked up to um, and didn't get an offer. So, you got my dad oh. always said, you got to like who you got to like who likes you, right? Um, so, I understand that. Uh, I, so, my next two options were Stanford and Duke. Um, really wanted to go to, uh, you know, some some academically strong, um, you know, environment. Um, my dad being a teacher and everything. So um, definitely wanted to go to those two. Didn't get offered from either of those two as well. So out of nowhere, Northwestern comes in um, and offers me. Uh, didn't know who Northwestern was. Never heard of it. Um, my dad <laughs> said they're in the Big Ten. Uh, I said, okay, cool. And then he said, uh, I got another vicinity for you. They play Duke and Stanford while you're there. And I was like, all right, bet I'm signing. <laughs> and I committed as a junior, stayed committed throughout the whole process. And um, great experience, man. Met met some great people, was able to get coached by some great coaches. Um, and then, you know, lifelong friendships, you know, built there. Um, you know, just really got a, a cool, cool taste of, you know, being in college and just being away from home. I think that's a, a very – underrated you know thing you know about going away for college you know not being in that comfort zone that you're used to but really getting away and you know learning and you know learning different environments cultures you know guys from the midwest my room one of my best friend you know now uh was my roommate in college from cincinnati ohio um you know just learning different people you know all that stuff man it was amazing um and you know again got a chance to play you know still got to get a chance to play big time football you know, in the Big Ten, and uh, was able to upset um, Stanford one year and beat Duke twice. So, you know, that was amazing. <laughs> well, I'm a cow guy, so I'm gonna say, hell yeah, always <laughs> pick Stanford's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, take me through the free agency process for you because you've gone now two different signed with two different organizations with Cleveland and in Miami. How stressful is that process for guys that have not gone through it in your big league career? Yeah. Um, you know, you always say, like, you know, man, I can't wait for, you know, free agency, my turn to, you know, test the market. And, um, you know, for me, I, I've i had kind of the – I wouldn't say the worst timing to go into free agency, but my first year of free agency was COVID. My <laughs> second year of free agency was uh, coming off an injury. And then last year was coming off another injury. So 
Um, I, like I said, I think when, you know, when things are all well, you know, free agency is great, but, you know, sometimes, you know, it's hard to find that match or, you know, understand that, 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 that true fit that you want, um, and who's going to, you know, put those offers out for you and everything like that. Um, so again, different, different cases for different, for everybody. Um, for me, I wouldn't change my, I wouldn't tra change anything, honestly, for me. Um, I feel like I've grown from it. I've learned from it. I've matured from throughout every process that I've been on. And um, and I think God has placed me here for a reason, you know, to be in Miami this season right now. And, um, you know, just, you know, always being, you know, where my feet is. And, I, and I'm grateful for every opportunity that I've gotten in the NFL. Do you have a welcome to the NFL moment that you could, that you remember that you could share with us? Yeah, uh, funny. <laughs> we play against them this week, so please don't share this this week. But nah, that's fine. I'm I'm playing. <laughs> but well, uh, so we were. It was actually two moments. Um, you know, we're doing joint practice my rookie year in the NFL against the Detroit Lions. Um, Matt Stafford is the quarterback. Um, and one of their running backs was Amir Abdullah, um, who I had played previously in college. Um, you know, when he was at Nebraska. So. Um, we're doing like a move the ball period in practice. Um, and Matt Stafford made a throw that was out of like out of this world that I had never, you know, seen or thought a quarterback could ever make. <laughs> um, I think he got his toe stepped on on the play by one of his linemen and threw like a 100 mile an hour fastball dig route 30 yards for a first down completion and kept playing on the drive during two minute in practice. So that was like oh, wow. a, you know, this is a this is real life here. <laughs> it's real football here. And then um the second one was actually that same week we had uh the preseason game after joint practice. Um Amir Abdullah. Oh, it's funny, my coach, you know, was like, hey, you know, we're gonna run this coverage, we're gonna run this call, you're gonna have to get to the back late in the down and make this tackle in the open field. I'm like, okay, cool. Like I've been playing football all my life, you know, I've been making that same play all my life. Um uh, Mir Abdullah, great back, but I had tackled him before in the open field in college, like, you know, everything. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm excited, I'm, you know, for that moment. The first play of the preseason game that day, um, they ran the same play, same route, um, and I missed the tackle. And I was oh, like, no. yeah, and I was like, ah. I was like, okay, like, this is not, there's no more college, there's no more, you know, this is a, you know, this is a grown man league, right? And um, you got to be on top of your stuff every day really be attentional um, to the details and everything, mm -hmm. um, all that, man. Just, again, just like I said, just really humble me because, again, I, I'm like, I, I, I'm here, you know, I'm ready for this moment. I'm, you know, I'm getting reps with the ones. I'm excited. I go out there first with the ones. You know, I'm I'm ready, you know, and then that play happened, and I'm like, okay, yeah, you still got work to do, but, you know, you, you're here for a reason. You understand that. You've been – don't lose your confidence. You, you know what you're doing. But, again, the attention to detail, you know, has to be at the utmost importance. That that humble pie is real. It's served really cold, ain't it? No, nah, no doubt. I tell people all the time, man. And one thing about the NFL, don't ever think you made it. You'll get humble very quickly. You know, daily. <laughs> you probably don't remember, guy. I remember the first time I tried to tackle Ricky Waters, and he he hit me in my sternum with one of his knees, man, and it took <laughs> everything in me just to make it to the sideline without yeah. going down on the ground. I just didn't want anybody to see how much pain I was in. Yeah, but I, I felt you. like he knocked my soul loose. <laughs> Like DC just knocked his phone over. What's your favorite stadium to play in outside of Miami? I was about to say the Miami Dolphins. Hard rock <laughs> <laughs> but uh, mm. uh, the Rams stadium was pretty cool Monday night, man. I had never been there for a night game. Um, Sorry. Sorry. As mm. I said, night, right? <laughs> night. The building said effects. night, night. Yeah, I was saying uh, the Ram. I think the Ram Stadium is pretty cool. Um, uh, and then you got to say, uh, you know, Cowboy Stadium, right? Like anytime you're able to play there in a new stadium, um, it's amazing, you know. So that was another one of my, the that was my third preseason game as a rookie. We that was the, the stadium was just built, um, and that was my third game there. So. Um, again, just again, the NFL stadiums are amazing. You know, anytime you're able to play at any any spot, uh, Seattle's great, Minnesota's great, all that. Um, I just wish they all had uh, roofs, though. <laughs> what was uh, what was Bills Mafia like? Yeah, that was fun. Um, you know, they they hate Miami. Miami hates them. 
Um, you Squish know, so that fish. was, huh? Squish the fish. Literally, literally. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they say. Um, up but it was amazing though, man. That was a great environment to be in. Um, obviously not the outcome that we wanted. Uh, but that, that, that was, uh, that was an atmosphere right there. That was a great atmosphere to play in right there. All right, Anthony, we, we're going to get you out of here on this before your, the Dolphins facility tells you, you got to go again. Um, what did it mean to you now that you're a year removed from being an Ed Block Courage Award recipient? What does it mean to you when you look at that trophy? Yeah, um, man, just a lot of – that trophy was, you know, not about me at all, but more so about the people that were in, in my corner um, through one of the toughest times in my life. You know, I mentioned, you know, one injury, you know, being the hamstring, but um, that, that, that knee surgery was the first surgery I ever had in my life. You know, when I was my sixth year in the NFL – you know, I'm thinking I'm playing great ball, thinking about to get an extension with the Cleveland Browns. And, you know, one play, boom, you know, I'm off the field for the rest of the year. Um, you know, and that, and that hurt me. You know, I, I didn't know how to handle that um, by myself. Um, you know, just going through it. I'm, to this day, you know, that's still one of the hardest days of my life just because, you know, I, I know how much work I put in, you know, to be in that moment, to prepare myself for that moment. Um and, you know, to get, you know, to go through that. Um, but again, like I said, better from it, mature from it, learn from it. Um, you know, and I, and I, I'm grateful for my, my people, the people in my corner, you know, my circle that really helped me down during that time that, uh, obviously God first and foremost, but my father, um, uh, my mother, uh, teammates, friends, you know, all family members, everybody, you know, the training staff for the Cleveland Browns, um, also, you know, just, just thank them for, you know, sticking with me, being in my corner at that time. Cause that was a really tough time in my life. So, um, I think that's what that, you know, award means more so to me, you know, not just myself and me coming back from injury, but the people that helped me along that journey, um, you know, going through that tough time again, cause I had never, you know, missed that amount of time and never went through a uh, surgery before. Mm. DBDC, any final questions before we let, we release Anthony? I'll let you go, DB, since you're the other statesman. No, I don't have anything for him, uh, but it was it was a pleasure meeting you. It was good talking to you. And, uh, you know, it's good to meet another Florida boy uh, from, <laughs> from Tampa, myself. Okay. Hillsborough County is where I'm from. Gotcha. So uh, it's, it's always good to meet some Florida people and see them in the NFL doing well. No, no doubt, my guy. I appreciate you guys. You know, nice to meet everybody that I hadn't met before. Um, but yeah, thankful, thankful for you guys for this opportunity. Absolutely. Congratulations, Anthony. And I, I know you're actually coming up, you're coming up on double digits, right? Next year is going to be 10. Uh, no, nah, it'll be nine next year. Next year. Be nine, okay. <laughs> but, well, well, God willing, I'm, 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 I'm manifesting that you get to your double digits and that yeah. you keep building that 401k and that great no retirement. <laughs> Cause you know, I'm only four years away. So I'm, I'm, I'm like counting the days. And it, I remember being <laughs> you thinking like, man, that is never going to like, man, that's <laughs> so far away. Yeah. And now I'm in those three year countdowns, man. So by the time you get to really? 10, I'm going to be, be, be asking the lead to go ahead and start, start filling my mailbox up with checks. Nah, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Anthony's got a big game Sunday. The Dolphins host the Las Vegas Raiders. One o'clock. You can watch the game on CBS 2023. A block courage award recipient, Anthony Walker. Thank you for taking some time with us today. Um, it's always great to catch up with you, buddy. No, no doubt. I appreciate you guys. Sorry. It's, it just keeps shutting off. Right up. The lights are <laughs> trying to tell good. us it's time to wrap this up. It's trying, <laughs> trying to tell us to wrap it up. All right. So actually that is going to wrap it up for us for Dwayne Brooks, for Dwayne Clemens. I'm Dave Stonewell. This has been the Ed Law Courage Cast. <laughs>